Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. It's said that our universe is filled with billions of galaxies, but how far away are they? Astronomers calculate galaxies' distances by measuring their redshift. The most redshifted galaxies are said to be the most ancient and remote, but recently, Astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope have observed galaxies that are too ancient, too close to the Big Bang. The mystery is that these galaxies did not have enough time for gravity to create the structures we observe. In the conventional theory, one of the problems they have is gravity forming galaxies so soon after the Big Bang. That's because gravity is a very weak force. In the electric universe, you are organizing material by electricity and magnetism, which are vastly more powerful than gravity and are able to form these kinds of structures in very short times. Several astronomers analyzed a new group of over 1,600 galaxies, analyzed them for shape and color. They sorted them into the Hubble sequence, which is an observational category that galaxies come in elliptical shapes and in spiral shapes. These astronomers who analyzed these galaxies also calculated their distance based on the common assumption that redshift is a measure of distance, which they assume is caused by the expansion of the universe. The redshift interpreted as a measure of distance means that the higher the redshift of a galaxy, the farther away it is. And because of light travel time, the farther away it is, the longer the light has been traveling. And therefore, the galaxy would be from a younger time in the universe. It would be closer to the Big Bang. A lot of the galaxies they studied went back to 11 and a half billion years ago, so they would be only a couple of billion years after the Big Bang. Another assumption is that gravity is the only force that organizes the universe. So after the Big Bang blew out kind of a fog of matter, it would take a certain amount of time for gravity to organize this matter into galaxies. According to conventional theory, they wouldn't expect gravity to be able to do this in only 2 billion years. Discovering that there's a Hubble sequence all the way back to 11.5 billion years ago creates difficulties for explaining it with gravity. Astronomers typically classify galaxies by their shapes. Ellipticals, lenticulars, spirals, and irregulars all said to follow an evolutionary sequence. Since this classification was first named by Edwin Hubble, it's called the Hubble Sequence. But how well does this convention actually describe galactic evolution? One of the quotes from the group is this, clearly the Hubble Sequence formed very quickly in the history of the cosmos. It was not a slow process. Now we have to go back to the theory and try to figure out how and why. This isn't entirely unreasonable because it's politically and economically almost impossible to consider a, a fundamentally new theory. If you look back in the history of science, the fundamental conceptual changes are rare because the benefits are often generations removed from the initial questions, and the questions don't really matter for daily life. They won't change the price of eggs. So there's a lot of incentive to just tinker with a theory and try to find something that'll work reasonably well. And the more involved the theory gets, the more opportunities you have for tinkering with it. So getting new ideas considered is difficult, to say the least. But when a theory becomes so encrusted with these patches and these tinkerings, it begins to become a nuisance. So you see this today, and a lot of people are unofficially expressing dissatisfaction with the current state of astronomy and actually a lot of the sciences. The problem with patching the existing theory is that they keep coming up with new, what we call helper assumptions, fudging. This would be things like dark matter, dark energy, 
super compressed matter like in black holes and neutron stars. There's no laboratory evidence to support any of these new things. They're just added on assumptions in order to save the theory, in order to make gravity work. Because you see these early condensations of matter and high energy sources, conventional gravity can't do that. So they have to get a lot more gravitational energy into these areas to produce what they see. They do that simply by pressing a lot more matter into a lot smaller space. If they take into account the electric force, you can get this much energy in a small space simply by powering it with electricity. Since the space age, we've discovered that the universe is composed of plasma, which has demonstrable electrical properties, rather than mass and gas, which is all that the conventional theories will allow. So if you allow electricity and magnetism to form these bodies, it can be done very quickly, and they show the forms that can be investigated in laboratory plasma discharges. Laboratory demonstrations and numerical simulations give scientists new insights into galactic evolution. As these insights combine with spectacular images from space, a new frontier of astronomy and astrophysics is emerging. It's time for some new ideas. The distant galaxies are much too gigantic and majestic for us to truly comprehend. Yet laboratory experiments and simulations using simple electromagnetic forces do create galactic forms without the immense time frames astronomers have proposed based on gravity. More attention needs to go to experimental displays that are not constrained by the weak force of gravity. Let those who model plasma and electricity work with the so-called Hubble sequence diagram to produce galactic structures morphing from a spiral into an elliptical, then on to an irregular galaxy by varying the inputs. This possibility is real and achievable if we'll just change the way we see the universe with more attention to the power of electricity. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.